Hello again. Welcome to another edition of Arts and Ideas. I'm Sue Swinand. We have a great show lined up for you today. My guests are Michael Hashi and Cat O'Connor, and uh, they have an incredible background with long lists of awards and exhibitions and have been uh, leaders in the art community in Central Mass for many years. Um, some of you may know Kat as a poet, uh, as well as uh, from having studied with her at the Worcester Art Museum. And uh, Michael, I mean, he has something I remember very specifically was his show at the Worcester Art Museum of Geometric Abstractions, one of the first uh, times I was really aware of your work. He also has a beautiful uh, mural at the Federal Courthouse in uh, Worcester. So uh, I'm very proud to have both of you with me today. Thank you for joining us, and um, I appreciate your being here. They have a project coming up, uh, which I want to hear all about. Uh, I want to, what's the name of the project, and where is it, and so forth? Is it Definite Indefinite, yep. which is Kat's title. Uh, and we won't say who is who in, the, in this uh, particular project. But uh, it happened to start about two years ago when Kat was giving a lecture in her previous exhibit at the Kokorian Gallery, uh, exhibit of paintings of figures in, in, in water, uh, refracted light, beautiful color. And I remember being knocked out by the abstract nature of her work and asked her in the Q&A afterwards uh, whether she did abstractions, whether, uh, you know, I, I, I appreciated the, the figure itself, the, the beautiful uh, aspect of that, but at the same time, I was so drawn to the way she dealt with liquid light in a, in a curious way. And she answered. Um, I do do abstractions. <laughs> I just don't show anyone. Uh -huh. <laughs> I read something on your uh, website that said, f for you, abstractions were always like a closer look. And I thought that was very interesting because you didn't get away from the structure of nature. You just took it at a different level so that you were aware of just the relationships of lines and shapes. Yeah, magnified it and changed it, which is what water does, really. It reflects things in a way that's not always predictable. Um, but is usually really interesting. I did want to say that indefinite, definite, indefinite is sort of a bastardization on a Georgia O'Keeffe quote um, when she's talking about her abstract work. Definite, indefinite. Yeah. And so where will this be? You mentioned Krikorian Gallery. That's uh, over at the Craft Center at 25 Sagamore Road. And it's a beautiful gallery. And when is that happening? Uh, the opening is uh, March 30, is it not? Uh, 5.30 to 7.30, thereabouts, and it runs through the, the month of April. So uh, it's there now. You get over there and see it. Mm -hmm. um, let's start looking at some of the works. I see you brought a couple works, which I really appreciate. And uh, are all of, these are both drawings. And are all of the works in this show going to be drawings? Yeah, yes, they are. We started out <laughs> thinking that it might be a a show of painting, but for some reason I got down this rabbit hole of white on black, which is a kind of resurrection of stuff I'd, I'd, I'd done a, a while ago. And uh, this particular image of a reverse curve way back from undergraduate school kept recurring in my mind, and I had to exercise it in some way. It was really a curve from a painting done by a, a mentor and a professor way back at Mass Art in 1967 or so, uh, Rob Moore, who people who studied then know as a kind of mentor and, and hero. Unfortunately, we lost him in the early 90s. Um, I, has, I somehow had to s have an excuse to bang out repetitive images in the beginning. So these are reverse curve yes, images? Yes, they, they are. And uh, tell us a little bit about your medium. And, uh, OK. Um, it, the medium is simply a white general's charcoal white pencil on black Canson paper. So uh -huh. there's a bit of tooth to the paper. It's jet black. 
And as you can see from the slide, I, I'm do just. Do you buy the black paper as black paper? You yes, don't I do. prepare I do. that I do. yourself. Yeah, I do. Uh, and the the mark itself. That's that's the issue go going on here. I'm really a mark maker. You know, I, I really have gotten into this business of yes, definitive uh, edges and and uh, and forms, but at the same time, there's a great nervous energy. There's a great sort of repetitive um, flow that I get into when I begin organizing marks on a surface. I did that very large scale in murals and chalkboards. It's like little static pulses, isn't it? it? Exactly. I mean, it, it, there's a kind of energy field there. And I sort of corral them, let them go, you know, organize them, disorganize them. You're uh, very organized. Okay. Well, <laughs> well you should, there, are so, there are a few in here that aren't so organized, at least on my, it, everyone's, it's all relative, I suppose. And, uh, and, and Kat, what, are, what is your material? I'm actually using Conte crayon ink and graphite on oh, white ink paper. Too. I use some ink, yeah. Uh -huh. um, and that basically came out of the fact that Michael wouldn't do anything but black and white. <laughs> well, I was going to say, you know, the black and white does make them resonate more and yes. feel more unified in uh, one exhibition. And I noticed yours are black on white and right. his are white on black. So. Well, one of the things I found so interesting about it is his mark is so intriguing to me. Um, we talked about the fact that it's nearly mechanical. It's not calligraphic in, it, in and of itself, um, but each line changes. They're not perfect. They're so not there's a wonderful They're not beauty mechanical, to them. They're like not made mechanical. by a machine, exactly. is what we're saying. But yet they have that mechanical desire. Yes. They, because they're made with a ruler <laughs> and an exact. Uh, no, you keep no. The pen, <laughs> you keep the pencil sharpened to the exact thickness. I do. So you get the. That's why right. we have mechanical. But pencils. he doesn't use a ruler. He does I'm fascinated no. by. They're all that they're very natural. Me, yeah. Because the lines are similar in length, and width, and they're straight. Again, it's all relative. You know, I look, look yeah. up. I mean, we were talking about things up close versus far away. Uh, the joke we had through the project was looking at a Rembrandt late portrait, a self-portrait, where if you s study his nose, okay, there's a, there's a kind of blobby, wonderful, abstract expression, a this swirl, is true. swirl yeah. at the end <laughs> of his, no it, it, his nose. You step back, it's a wonderful, romantic, you know, yeah. uh, abstract, uh, excuse me, a, a figurative um, portrait. But uh, the more you, that's one of the things that came, became obvious in this, in this project is that the more you get micro, the more things fall apart into abstractions. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Chuck Close. Yep. Yeah, with little abstractions right. in each right. little square. Uh, let's take another one. Now, uh, the other thing I noticed a lot, which I really enjoy in your work, is to me they're like puzzles. Because mm -hmm. I s was sitting looking at them and looking at them and thinking about your process and how it, it represents to me like a mechanical system you know, where you, uh, some kind of uh, rational system mm -hmm. where you go from so many marks or mm -hmm. where there's an overlay mm -hmm. or where there are three overlays and the lines get closer together and the value gets mm -hmm. lighter. Or Again, it's all relative. Uh, in some ways, these are the <laughs> looser things, <laughs> the many looser things that I've done uh, over a period of time. There is a kind of mechanical uh, division with rulers, but there's also a kind of reverse curve repetition that happens, and that those are actually done with uh, with cardboard templates. In yeah, words, I do. I do. Uh, I thought sometimes things, your you know. templates might have been flipped. They're flipped, and they're also of different sizes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's take one of cats that. Uh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> right. Now, did you have a title for this one, or are these just more? Um, or less, uh, yes. This is called "I Feel the Need to Desire Now." Um, so I like the play on words in the title, and I also, you'll notice it's tipped upwards. So, so in other words, you were swimming this way yes, at, with the yeah. surface of the water, but you made it this way. Yes, so I want to take it changes out of context. context. Yeah. changes everything. Right, and changing it into black and white, I think, helped me do that. So mm -hmm. looking at, you know, my work is always about that, the abstraction that exists beneath the figure beneath the realism. Um, and I think changing it to black and white let me hone in, the, in on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I started doing these drawings with the white backgrounds as a result of looking at Michael's work and thinking really about how much reality do you need to play off that feeling of the reflection becoming its own thing. Yeah. Um, and so tipping the figure on end 
um, makes you a little bit uncomfortable and a little uncertain, I think you look at it in a different way because of that. Well, you know, I feel like one of the most significant things that's happening in your work is you let go of the water. Yes. This, in this piece, you're no longer thinking of that as water. Maybe the bathing suit is the only thing that gives it away. Mm -hmm. But it's almost like you're passing through a screen or a veil or it, it's entering that other dimension. To me, it's like yeah. going through a mirror or something. Right, right. I, I like that very much. It. OK, let's go to another one. Yeah, here's one where I really, I couldn't stop looking at this one, trying to think about if it was symmetrical or not, you know, mm -hmm. whether they were reverse images or. And it's, you know, I've done a lot of thinking about abstraction, and, and Kat has suffered through my accounting of all my reading and, and, and philosophizing. And what I've looked at, not so much as a theme in these kinds of things, is how abstraction occurs in other disciplines, in other human endeavors. I mean, you think of music. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it's a, it's a long time um, um, idea, but the idea that music is simply sounds, physical sounds and silences improvised or, or orchestrated, and there's a tremendous emotional response to that. I mean, what's causing just that? Just, just, just the, to the intervals. Just to the intervals, the organization. Yes. So, so my stuff is about organization in that sense, but it's not an organization that, uh, that is necessarily trying to prove a point. There's mm -hmm. no thesis. There's no yes. thesis. And you know, th uh, readings that I do, uh, thinking that I do, it's it form, forms with a, pure. For, well, I don't know about that. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a great. Uh, Motto, but yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, uh, no, but I the, can't the, take the point is, but if you think, think about, I mean, mathematics, uh, it's an abstraction. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's called from Music real life. Music is the yeah. is the most yeah. abstract yeah. form, yeah. really. But let me get this one thing out about mathematics. And that is that there are computer systems in mathematics these days, programs that start out with very simple rules, and they are left to run forever. Okay. And they, they invent new formula. They invent yeah. new realities. Yeah. They, it is an abstraction that's self-directed internal to the computer. Yes. And sometimes they become something that's useful in real life. And other times, they are just pure realms of logic, mathematical logic. Mathematical systems yeah. create forms. Those algorithms can right. change right. and vary. Right. And, and the forms are related right. and feel real and true because but they're all built off of the same the same idea, same form right. the same and, system. and the scary thing is just quickly it, they're on their own yeah. they're make they yeah, they're yeah. internal to the computer and they're building worlds that we are not conscious of yeah well, how long have you guys been discussing this project Two years. Two years, uh, yeah. So you, that must have been a fabulous experience bouncing <laughs> off of each other. It's been amazing. It really has. You never realize re how much you get out of talking to uh, a like-minded individual. How long have you been at Worcester State University? Uh, I, me, decades, but at Cat at least 10 years? 15 so years. 15 years. Yeah. Wow. So you've been teaching yeah. together yeah. for 15 years. Yeah, right. yeah. That's awesome. And it's interesting, we teach in the same studio, and Michael always does these amazing blackboard drawings that I can't compete with, <laughs> just showing students basic things. Uh -huh. um, so I, I think it's kind of ironic that we ended up doing this black and white form. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this one. Um, so this is one of the earlier drawings as well, really thinking about how does the space affect the object so that yes. there's no, yeah, there's no perfect comment background. There's no literal holding structure. Um, this was a, an image that it's from a night pool. Um, so the light was coming up from below and that gave me those very dramatic dark shapes, uh, which there's still a figure, but I think they become more interesting in and of themselves. There's also more of the mark making happen, happening here, um, just moving beyond what the thing is and, and seeing what the mark can do for yeah. it. Yeah, it also somehow starts to feel like a crucifixion too, yep. you know. Yeah, and you I've been playing with that form <laughs> for quite, um, a, quite a while. The other thing is when you said a form in space, I'm really intrigued about how you ent that white no longer is flat because of the way your form is in space. The white, you, you move into the white, I think, don't yes, you? Yes, definitely. And the other thing that I really wanted to mention is 
to me when I was looking at how are you the same, how are you different, you know, what is the way your work seems to be all about a state of being, an emotion, yes. a feeling, and uh, it, it's a much more messy kind of organic, uh, natural kind of mark. You were talking yeah. about the marks. Whereas Michael's is much more theoretical and cerebral, I think. Do you, would you? It's hard to talk about these things. I know that it's unconscious. No, my, po my a point, very my point strong is impact. that it's in, unconscious. I sort of organize the energy yeah. perhaps a little bit more. But that's the way it hit me. Right. You know, you right. could argue me down on no, that. No, no, no. <laughs> I have not, I, as I get older, I get easier. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting to see. <laughs> And how about this one? Oh, another one. Uh, same motif, repetition, um, intersection. I, they got more complex as time went on. Um, again, I keep going back to Rob Moore's cur curve, which is which was, hit me as a, a twenty-year-old uh, in a faculty show at uh, at at, um, at Mass Art, and it plays with space. And formally, it plays with space in the light areas. It plays with a kind of reversible figure field, and it sort of melts a little That's bit. That's something very significant yeah, too. Yeah. Is what is figure and what is field right. in these, and what we mean by that is what is the positive thing and what is the space behind it. The vase face, <laughs> because right, it right, flip, yeah, right, flips flips right, a lot right, in right, these. Right. Um, okay. okay. Oh. So you had said something about the bathing suit, yes. and I've been dealing yes. with that issue that that it's not really they're not really about swimmers. Yes, um, they're really about the form. More and more, they become about the female form, um, and wanting to alter that in some way. So the dress comes into it as something that takes it beyond just swimmers in water. Um, that it's not about that anymore. I like that you let the swimming suit go. Mm. Because in this one, the impact of being trans transcending the, the material world, you know, passing into another realm, uh, it's so strong. And it, it, it also reminded me of the idea of that how it, it's when you're swimming, there's a, a different, flu you know, you're in a different material in a way medium. you're isolated and mm. it's the sound is not this is about passing into that silence yes it's it's a really striking figure okay more transparencies more complexity uh perhaps a little too much you know I, 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 this is my baroque period so we're Coco <laughs> period so 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 i may be a little decadent and, and too complex in this I, one I, I, you know i'm a maximalist <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> No, I love this one. I really do. Now, do you consciously think of, I mean, when I look at Saul LeWitt, he, he does things where he has so many things mm -hmm. per inch or mm -hmm. so many, and I could almost go and count the marks here and say 10 marks per inch, 20 mm -hmm. marks per inch, and, and it changes. Is it, is it that mathematical it's, for you or no, just No, it's not. Intuitive? I mean, the mark, mark making itself is, is really just purely visual. Do you make them dense? Do you, make, do you yeah. spread them out so yes. that there are they're, yes. they're fewer and farther between? Um, so you know, the density uh, is... Uh, well, it's like sculpting light, okay? It's like, it's like taking a white magic medium, you know, that's almost three-dimensional and pushing it, pulling it, spreading it out. You know, there's something very magic about it for me. I mean, so the, the lines are thinned out or pushed back or together. Made or made more dense, yes. simply more layered. And then it, it, it tends to take on the feeling of volume even mm -hmm. with your the shape. The shape itself does that, but also uh, the density of the strokes. Sure. And then the whole thing of the overlap where you get right. double power. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Oh, wow. That. And space, once again, so when I look at Michael's image, um, there's so much absorption in that black space. Um, there's a moving in and a coming back out that is, we talked about it almost as being a sense of longing um, within that shape. So once again, I'm trying to use that reflection to become the thing that pulls you in and pushes Ooh. you out again, mm -hmm. um, which Michael's work does so beautifully. It's almost like before I was talking about entering through the mirror or entering into another zone. But in this one, it's almost like that 
veil is changing you into an abstraction. You know, as you pass through that, you become energy. Right, it's, right. It's and the energy is, is on the side. It's, they're full of concept, Kat. They're wonderful. Yeah, thank you. And what's beautiful about, I mean, <laughs> the grass is always greener, I suppose. But, you know, I've done representational work. I'm doing abstraction right now. But what's, what I'm jealous about in terms of, of, of Kat's work and realism in general, not that she's just a realist, is that you've got a human hook. Yes, you know, yeah, you've yes, got, you've absolutely. Got, you, know, for the, you know, you've got something that, that the everyday person who deserves, to their, do, who yeah, deserves recognition, you know, yeah. uh, an entry, entryway into I the I wanted work. to ask you that. Do you ever feel tempted to put a recognizable object in one of your drawings? Well, for since 1984 or 5 through maybe the late 90s, I was doing representational images. Uh, you're a, no, his representational no. work is absolutely gorgeous, like the piece at the, at the mm -hmm. courthouse. Mostly large scale with yeah. chalk on blackboard. Yeah. Yeah. And he has all that technical skill, obviously, but the pieces I think about you are the musical color squares and okay. stuff like that. Yeah, I am a colorist. And I <laughs> actually wanted to <laughs> ask you both, do you think of yourselves <coughs> primarily as painters? Um, yes, I think mm -hmm. so. Uh, although this has certainly you changed use every what I can media, do. Both I do. Of you, both yeah, of you yeah. Are versatile in every media. Yeah. And we never, we really didn't know what form this exhibit was going to take. For me, I didn't know until probably November of this past year, so four months ago. Wow. Um, and we're we're filling a, a large gallery with images. Um, I had been doing abstract paintings, getting ready. For this show, um, not necessarily good <laughs> abstract paintings, but I did about a thousand paintings of Having all different sizes. Having to do sides. with the water and the shapes of the no, uh, reflections. No, mostly just playing with color, with oh. basic, okay. simple geometric shapes. No kidding, I haven't yeah, seen those. Just, and yeah, just it's been it was it's been such an amazing thing to do to be able to let go of everything that's expected of you as a painter or an artist. Yes. And just see what the options are. Wonderful place to be in. Yes, Wonderful place absolutely. To be in. It's ironic that none of them will be shown. Uh, <laughs> oh, here's a here's a, a, a little more. I, 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 I should have asked the question about: Do you ever get tempted to put a little mouse in the corner? <laughs> Down there. Um, yeah, this, I just, I mean, why are you bothering, Michael? You know, that why, why, why put in all the shape? Why don't you do what you, what's inside? Just the so energy field. Just the energy. I just wanted, yeah. and, and readings in science and, and different sorts of thinking philosophically, there is an energy field that seems to underlie everything. In other words, yes. even a vacuum is yes. not an emptiness. Even a yes. vacuum has little pseudo particles that pop in and out. So that whole, that whole business of, of there being Never a complete emptiness, but there always being a kind of teeming longing or, or a, a kind of pregnant uh, waiting time for things to happen is, is, yes. is a real, for abstraction, that's, it I mean, could me, be about yeah. that thing of time, yeah. too, you know, yeah. Go, I'm sorry. Uh, I no, no, it's fine. What, what came to mind a, a few minutes ago is that, is that talking with Kat and looking at her work uh, and having this, this wonderful opportunity, I really had to sort of uh, push myself into thinking about whether my reading and, and writing, and I do write a lot just for myself, is more important or as important as the art. And yeah. I, I, I've not come to, I've not come to a conclusion. Because your art is yeah. a way of thinking. Exactly. I mean, it's it, a way of thinking. And, and abstraction, we, give, I'm sorry, abstraction can uh, give me a territory where that unknowing and that struggle seems more real. In other words, it seems to be yes. a theater where because whereby, you can go to the yeah. core of the issue. I it's, think well, so or well. just exist on the boundary of something that's indeterminate. Yes, okay. indefinite, yeah. indefinite. Here's another of the swimmers, but we only have three minutes, so let's. Okay. Uh, uh, here <laughs> we, got, we got this. Yeah. Let's go to cat. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, well, this one is much m looser. Yeah, I think it. It's more about once again, how much do you need to make it figurative, realistic, and how much can you get away with. Mm -hmm. um, and I like this feeling of the change of environment becoming a change of image, mm -hmm. um, and that, that what's reflected sometimes is more interesting than what's physical. 
Just a quick comment, though. If, if she turned this painting upside down and looked at it as a, an orchestration of visual elements, line, shape, color, and texture, which is what abstraction is usually doing, orchestrating elements into relationships, mm -hmm. you know, it, it could be a complete abstraction. Oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Back to the geometry. <laughs> it almost feels yeah. metaphysical in uh -huh. some way. You Thank know, you. it's very lovely. Thank you. Ah, and uh. another really abstract. Uh, <laughs> I am just barely seeing the figure at the bottom there. And how about, tell us just a little bit about this. And was that one where you just let yourself go into I it? I just let go. Um, and it actually became a really interesting thing to find all these bubbles and shapes and um, they're all created by the motion of the pencil um, which it just fascinated me that they I think they grew out of the form um, both in a sense of uh, visually they're growing out of the form but physically that's how it happened in the drawing I was well, moving along and sometimes I don't think we have as much control as we think we do. <laughs> so. Well, it, it looks like you just are discovering it in the process of working. Absolutely. It, they have such powerful, both of your works have very wonderful graphic power. And, you know, it's almost like Baskin or something, you know, it really. Well, you're talking about metaphysical stuff. I mean, the, the, the energy that's on top is really like a Hubble uh, photograph. Yeah. Yeah. I want to just mention this last one, and then this should be our last image, but the reason is, for me, it was the most like your work when I was trying to think <laughs> of how are you the okay. same or how are you different, because it's that bilateral symmetry mm -hmm. and the little thick marks in the, in the field and the white on black. And so in many ways, this one was the one that was most like Michael's work to me. Um, now, I want to tell people, too, again, that the show is opening at the Craft Center, Worcester Center for Crafts, 24 Sagamore Road, March 30th, and it'll be up for the month of April. Yeah. And do you, uh, you have a, a gallery talk coming up there too, don't you? The gallery talk is the 20th? April 20th. Yeah. April 20th, and boy, that'll be great. And you know, you can just walk in there and see the show uh, for the whole month. It's free, free to open to the public. They're, they're thrilled to have people come in and see their work. You can leave comments. They have a mm -hmm. great craft shop there, too. So do stop over and see this show. It's uh, one of the big shows of the season, I would say. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And I want to thank you both very much for coming in and sharing your ideas with us. And I'm glad you were able to join us, too. And uh, hope you'll join us again next time for another edition of Arts and Ideas.